Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is, where's the date at? August 2nd, 2019. Today, we're gonna talk about Ninja. Uh, we're gonna talk about Booga. We're gonna talk about breastfeeding. We're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. We're not gonna talk about Eero though. No, we're not talking about Eero. This is not the Eero show. We're not talking about Eero. Whoop. All right, now, I don't know if you guys heard, I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, Ninja, maybe you heard him, he's a relatively popular Fortnite streamer, been streaming for about seven years. Wait, what? Freakor, what? Oh no, no, we're not talking about that, no way, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going near that shit. <clears throat> Ninja who, what? Uh, Ninja has uh, left Twitch and is now streaming on, on, uh, on Mixer. Now some of you guys will be like, what's a Mixer? I'm fairly certain that majority of you guys know what Mixer is, but if you don't, Mixer is a streaming platform that pretty much is identical to Twitch in that it will allow you to stream everything from IRL to video games to creative shit to whatever you want, uh, so long as it doesn't, you know, break any kind of laws or anything like that, like the usual stuff. Um, it is owned by Microsoft, or it was acquired by Microsoft, now owned by Microsoft. Uh, and as was pointed out, I guess the font is fairly, fairly similar to the PlayStation font, which is kind of funny because Microsoft Sony. Um, it is, uh, it has just been doing, it's just been doing. It hasn't really been doing poorly, like some other streaming sites. Uh, it hasn't really been doing uh, necessarily well. But when your financial backing is Microsoft, uh, you can kind of afford to just wait. Just like YouTube's financial backing is Google or Alphabet, they can afford to just wait. Uh, and Twitch's, uh, uh, Twitch's financial backing is Amazon, they can afford to just continue doing what they're doing. Now, um, first, we can take a look at the actual announcement. It happened uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Where Mixer tweeted out, they said that, uh, well, Ninja tweeted out, had his little, this video, uh, we'll just keep this thing muted here, uh, where he goes out and gives a, gives a fake press conference and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's totally corny, but you know what, man, like, I, I have no, I have no hate for Ninja in this regard, like, this is awesome, uh, if, I, if I could get paid to just stream on a different platform, uh, well after my popularity has peaked, I would just take it. Um, now, I've made that mistake before, well, no, not quite the same mistake, uh, but, uh, when I switched from streaming to, or from making video content to going to Zam, I thought that was great, I made a huge, it's like, I was like, wow, I got all this money, well, pretty much over the hill anyways, video game content, that was like five years ago, look at me now, uh, <laughs> but still, well, the, the crowd was pretty strange, though, it was, I wonder what the, what was the significance of the crowd all being, I guess it's just basically ninja in all different crazy outfits, I mean, it's kind of funny, but, uh, but still, good for him for finally making it over to, uh, uh, you know, for getting paid, basically, and moving over to, uh, to Mixer, and probably just making a shitload of money. Now, how much money is he making? We don't know. We have actually no idea how much he's making. There was this tweet that was leaked out. No, I'll say, I won't say leaked. It was erroneously posted, um, and then deleted with no mention whether or not it was, uh, well, not, not that I've seen as of yesterday, uh, uh, anything about, about it following this. <clears throat> they said Justin Ninja has signed a 60 year $932 million contract with, with Microsoft at Watch Mixer League sources tell ESPN. Um, now this is, these numbers are fucking bullshit. Okay. Bullshit. They're, hold on a second. No, they're, they're, I just want to make sure we make this very clear. Cause someone might be like, no fake news. This is not true. Okay. Not true. Okay. Not true. No, we don't know. We have no idea what the numbers are. Okay. Okay. We don't, we don't know how much money he's making from this. All right. So, uh, but I can tell you, it's probably gonna be a lot of money. <laughs> no matter, no, no matter what the number is, it's probably going to be more than probably some of us make in a year. Uh, for sure. Because, because he brings just stupid yeah, hell, hell of money hell he brings hell of 13 year olds to the platform which is a great thing for uh from for for uh mixer i mentioned this i think last week was going to take the thing off the, there just because somebody's gonna look okay. at um so actually wait first 
you guys are probably wondering like where he was in terms of sub traffic everything and all that stuff right let's go and look at that first before we go anywhere else <clears throat> so this is uh his actual monthly subs oh the the, the actual thing changed uh oh here we go oh it's because i have this uh this whole second there we go oh god sorry nope uh, so his sub numbers, remember last year he like peaked like crazy. Remember Drake and all that shit happened? Um, so he, he peaked and he got like 250, sorry, 250,000 subs. You can see the dark blue line means, uh, prime. It was all these prime subs and everything. Remember if you were there, it was actually kind of surreal, right? He's playing with Drake. Who's just on the phone or something like that. And then he makes a comment about like something like, oh, if you guys want to hit that prime right there, you could you know, hit that prime. And you know, if you have an Amazon prime account, then you could do whatever. Right. And it was just like, just massive floods, flood of, uh, of new, uh, of new subs. And he's pretty much maintained that for a long period after that. Uh, and then finally kind of just kind of getting steady there. And then towards the end, he was making, pulling in about 15,000 subs. Um, now, now, if you're wondering how this site gets his data, you basically sign up for it and you link your, your Twitch account and it will put a bot in your Twitch account and it will, uh, uh, and it will keep track of, 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 of basically sub resubs and subs and all that stuff. And it, it keeps, it keeps a number based off of that. Um, and so you could see basically where he's sitting in terms of sub, you can see that, uh, uh, 3,737 are, are paid subs and 13,000, about 14,000 are active subs. This is actually surprising. Uh, I thought this was actually really surprising because, um, I mean, well, I, I just thought that he had like a hundred thousand paid subs, you know, I, I guess I didn't know how low the number was. Uh, and if we look at this from the comparison of like other, other, uh, you know, other streamers, we have like shroud shroud is according to this. Now, not everybody has the bot in their account. Right. But we could pretty much glean that this is probably pretty accurate. Right. Um, according to this shroud is number one with 40,000 current subs, 10,000 of those are paid or 9,000, uh, 26,000 prime subs. Uh, and then even more interesting, uh, is that Dr. Disrespect has actually 5,000 more paid subs than shroud does and i don't i don't I, I think i think the reason why that is, is because perhaps dr disrespect actually brings in maybe an older crowd right because that would make sense because that's what, if you have money then just statistically you're probably a little bit older right so maybe that's what it is and like you know the younger folks just use their their parents amazon prime account or something i don't know i don't know i don't know how that works but um but yeah, so that's where he was sitting when he moved over. So it's still a pretty significant amount of money that he was making per, per, per month. We don't actually know what that number is because we're not, we're not uh, adding in donations. We're not adding in um, uh, any kind of sponsorship deals or anything like that. But you could probably rest assured that, that Ninja was bringing in a shitload of money every single month. Uh, way more than anybody in this room. Perhaps even everybody in this room combined. I'm just taking a guess. One of you guys is probably some fucking rich prince or some shit. But you aside, whoever you might be, uh, everybody else combined. All right. That logic kind of checks out. If you look at moon moon says he has a larger adult audience. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Let me see moon moon. Uh, yeah. Paid 10,000. They're almost 11,000 actually. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting to see the numbers like this. <clears throat> I never actually have gone through and, uh, and check this out and seeing, you can even see, uh, even Tifu Tifu has, uh, 16,000, uh, uh, prime subs and less paid subs. It's like that tilt based off their demographic when, uh, you're, you're a Nigerian prince. I fucking knew it. Oh, I'll wire you whatever money you want. Just send me your account number. Um, there were some pretty interesting reactions to this. Obviously, there's like a bazillion hot takes and everything. Everybody has their own thing to say about him moving over to, to Mixer. I had my own as well. Uh, I made a joke about him perhaps not being uninvited from, uh, from TwitchCon. And then very shortly afterwards, we discovered that his, uh, his uh, verified checkmark was removed from Twitch. And, and it's funny because because because... We know that, at least I hope everybody knows, that we as the community, we're the last ones to find out about this, all right? People at Twitch definitely, definitely knew that he was, um, that he was leaving. Uh, now, who, what kind of heads up they had? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But for certain, they actually knew. Um, but we were the ones that kind of were blindsided by it, by the announcement. So the fact that the check mark was removed so quickly is not so much that Twitch is salty and someone was like, well, fuck that guy, and then went and deleted it. They just basically scheduled it and they just took it down because that's part of their policy is that if you're a streamer or, or a, uh, if you're a partner streamer here on Twitch, you're not allowed to be, uh, you're not allowed to strip, just strip. You're not, well, you're probably not allowed to strip. Uh, you're not allowed to stream on any other competing platforms, which I foresee changing sometime soon. Because with Ninja going over there, 
<laughs> you guys are Linity. We're not talking about Linity today. Uh, did this affect Amazon stock? Oh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. Uh, it'd be really hard to see if it actually did because who knows what a dip today would actually rep represent. Um, what was I saying? Oh, you guys interrupted me. Son of a bitch. What was I fucking saying? God damn it. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. I foresee it changing because what happens is the uh, the most popular Fortnite streamer moves over, right? And then uh, other streamers, because he's going to take all of his fan base and all that, right? Now, granted, some of them are going to basically, they're going to go on both sites and whatever, but some of them who maybe are just fans of Shroud, uh, they're probably just going to stay on Mixer. They don't really care about the platform. They're going to stay on Mixer. I said last week that Twitch is very quickly turning into your father's streaming platform, and this is kind of further justifying that. Uh, but then you're going to have these other big Fortnite streamers who are going to want to renegotiate their contract with uh, with Twitch and make it so that they could be allowed to stream on multiple platforms. Otherwise, they might just fucking leave. And Twitch can't really afford that. So if they do make a couple exceptions and allow certain people to stream on both platforms, which may not happen right away, of course, this could be like a year down the line or something, uh, then then you're going to have this like cascading like snowball effect where you're going to have, you know, medium size or small size streamers going to be like, well, hold on a sec. If those guys are streaming to both flat platforms, then I want to stream on both platforms. It's like, oh, well, your partner agreement says you can't do that. And it's like, well, I'm not really gaining anything on Twitch anyways because it's fucking your old man streaming platform. I'm going to go where the new hotness is and they're going to switch over to Mixer. And they're just going to leave. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have this exodus of all these, all these fucking people who are like small streamers who could potentially be the next Shroud or the next Ninja or Dr. Disrespect who are just going to up and leave and become the next Shroud, Dr. Disrespect or whatever over on uh, over on Mixer. And before that happens, I'm certain that Twitch will, 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 will say, either one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to change their partner agreement to allow folks to stream on both platforms and just compete on a feature level, uh, or, or they're going to just stream Jimmy Kimmel and I don't know, uh, <laughs> the late, the late show, the Conan O'Brien, they'll just sign them all up. They might get Will Smith to stream live. You know, they might, they might go the YouTube route and just get, get all those folks on here, compete on a feature level too. I know, I know. Does this mean you have to download the Mixer app now? Oh yes, you do. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have the Mixer app on my phone, but I do have, but the Mixer, Mixer.com, the actual web interface is actually not bad. Like their, their UI is actually pretty fucking slick. Uh, if I may, if I may for a moment, I should have this page open because we were listening. I was listening to this all day uh, because I was farming their currency. They have, they have a listener currency. Get the skill shit out of my way. Uh, so they have a listener currency and you can see it up in the upper, upper right corner. Uh, let me actually go like this. Here we go. Um, they have a, 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 a viewer currency, I should say where you can actually go through and you earn sparks. And those sparks don't really do too much other than allow you to trigger large size emotes. So if I go like this, it goes skills. Uh, and I go and I say, do, do, do. We'll put a, like a big old pizza in here or something like that. It'll go bam. And then you'll see, uh, I put my picture out of the way. You can see a pizza just showed up right here with my, with my name on it. There you go. And then it shows right there. And I can mute myself. Can I actually do that? Oh, okay. Good. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, just need to check. Um, so it's not really bit donations because I don't, I, cause if, well, if they do turn a profit off that, it's not going to be that much because you, you accumulate points at a pretty rapid rate just in the, just in the past, like, uh, uh, say an hour and a half or two hours that I've had this, uh, this stream going, um, I have accumulated, you say I've, I have accumulated, accumulated 10,000, uh, Ember. Does it tell you what the rate which you accumulate? Not really. Uh, I'm level 13. <laughs> uh, so I guess I can unlock some more skills here. Level five, first day, bam. Oh, uh, keep watching. Oh, dang it. Okay, well, okay. I'm level 13. It's really level five. I don't know how this works. Um, really, I can't do that. But it it still has it still has emotes. You have a whole bunch of emotes. This is Ninja's emotes because I'm subscribed to him because it was free. You basically just go to this. You go to the site to Ninja's stream, and then you can just go and sign up for it and just basically uh, and you just reap the benefits of being subscribed, whatever it might be. So. They don't have clips. They don't have, they don't have a lot of features that, uh, yeah, embers are bits, by the way, yes. Uh, they don't have a lot of the features that the, are, are, are some of the more recent features that we have on Twitch. The highlight, the highlight system of being able to piece together clips and all that stuff, like all this, like Twitch is still ahead of the game in terms of features, for sure. But Mixer is not, it's not like epic empty, right? It's, it's actually, it actually has features where it's, it's a usable streaming platform that um that a lot of folks will just be able to just 
you know, it, not even really notice that certain things are missing. Except when you're like, oh, clip that, clip that. It's like, oh, well, the clipping system's not in. That's that's pretty much where you kind of run into uh, an issue. But um, the mixer is more younger generation social media. Like, yeah, you know, on that note, yeah, there, there's, uh, I mean, stickers. Stickers is a thing now because, because I mean, because younger generations were like, and younger, and actually uh, in China, it was huge. Like stickers big ass stickers like to throw in your in your messages or whatever like instead of just emotes like emotes are so small and it's like whatever uh being able to use stickers and throw them in your messages and everything that's that was the fun thing to do so whatsapp basically helped popularize the sticker thing uh where people were making extensions for whatsapp and that basically bled into everything everything else and mixer was smart enough to recognize that people like to have big emotes right and so they call they have skills they have basic stickers and they could uh you know they throw it in there Japan with their line app did it, but WhatsApp definitely popularized it. I could I could say that with absolute certainty, absolute certainty, because this was like seven years ago. <laughs> um, but I I, actually, I don't know about the line app though. I'm just I'm purely just talking on my ass here. But uh, clips is really the only feature that Mixer is missing. Yeah, clips aren't unlockable at a certain XP. Yeah, maybe maybe. Um, so his he did stream today, and uh, he did stream today. He did uh, he did he, he did get a couple chicken dinners. Fortnite chicken dinners, and he uh, he peeked out around. I don't know where he's at now, but as of like a like four five minutes ago or so, I watched him. I had him open like pretty much all morning, um, and he peaked like around like seventy seventy five thousand uh, viewers. Uh, and you know he did he did a couple matches. His product the production setup was crazy. I think it was like actually in the Microsoft office where you could actually see the the people like behind him. I would show I would show a like a you know a clip from the stream like actually like pull up his stream and show you guys, but I actually don't know if I'm allowed to show him because he's streaming on a competing platform. Whereas Lo-Fi Beats to Study 2 is on basically every fucking uh, uh he oh he's at Lollapalooza, is that what he's at? Okay, well I didn't pay attention to that part, but <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a it's a very interesting looking Lollapalooza. It's like basically a big like office building uh the big test is going to be what his numbers are in a month absolutely and also what the rest of the site's numbers are going to be in a month that's gonna be a huge thing thankfully some of you guys were very helpful in discord and going through and pulling a couple links uh, a couple screenshots uh to kind of just show like how empty some of the some of the categories were and whatnot uh and, and well i mean also with the purpose of showing the viewer numbers and everything we weren't necessarily sitting there just bashing mixer or anything like that uh, as a matter of fact i think overall the response to mixer has been very positive uh as far as as far as i've seen there's very little uh animosity towards mixer people are just kind of just like indifferent about it it's kind of like oh he's on mixer hmm, okay you know like nobody's nobody's like it's not like uh epic game store versus steam where people are very divisive uh over that whole thing where you're either you're on one side or the other and you'll fight to the death uh once the hype dies down then people will forget about how uh forget and show up on twitch out of reflex you know you th you think that but and you know what? You would be right. You would be right. But I, 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 in, I ensure. I, I, I am certain that um, that the younger demographic is going to stick around there. This, this is, this is not about trying to take uh, Twitch's demographic. This is about netting that younger, the younger crowd, getting them scooped in, and then getting them um, hooked on Mixer and Mixer becoming the next Twitch for that generation uh i mean i'm telling you everything is pointing to it like if you just look look at the business practices and things we've talked about on the show that twitch has been doing in the past um and you know i say business practice i just mean like you know based what the perception is like with the alinity thing right uh like if you look at those things it's like those things all add up like all those things really do add up and when you're looking at a site that doesn't really have very clear cut uh, terms of service because really in the end it's hold us accountable <laughs> and and we feel like hold we're not really able to hold anybody accountable for anything we don't really get the um it well it kind of gives it gives me the impression that that twitch is really going to start hurting here very soon let me actually play you this clip uh this is a clip from the mixer ceo and he's talking about twitch's terms of service so this is there's a video clip here but the guy is in, in tf2 and he's basically walking back and forth because he's trying to talk to the to the ceo of mixer so i'm just gonna play the audio for you guys here if i can actually have some audio here we go boom boom and here we go how will mixer differ from twitch there's so much drama with twitch okay so there's a couple of things on that point there's technology things that make us different there's features that make us different 
there's community and approach that makes us different. I think one of the things that we did very early on, uh, and we learned a lot, like from Twitch's approach, and you know, Twitch has struggled with uh, things along the lines of enforcement for a long time because it's a hard problem. It's a hard problem to solve, especially as a community grows. And so one of the things that we did um, early on to try to get ahead of some of that stuff was making our rules of conduct as clear and objective as possible so that you know if you're doing something right or wrong. There's not really a uh, gray area. And so if you look at like our have that open conduct blue. <laughs> as it relates to clothing, we outlined the exact uh, requirements in terms of clothing at each different rating on, on Mixer. And that's just one of the things that we do on that front. Uh, to help make it really clear. From a technology standpoint, uh, it's all about uh, supporting streamers with low latency interactivity, um, growing streamers' business through community building, um, and features along those lines that really hone in on what made Beam really special, which is the ability to interact with a streamer with less than one second of latency and really using that to scale out a streamer's business. So I think we've got a lot of opportunity there. Um, at the same time, we're not trying to take over Twitch or... Uh, migrate every single person from Twitch to Mixer. Uh, the goal has always been to support both communities. You know, no matter where you are, like we want streaming to grow in general, and Mixer can be successful um, in a lot of ways. So I'm excited for that. So we do have the, ter the terms of service here, and I do want to take a look at them with you guys because it is very well defined. It says right here. First off. Body areas defined. Who's this good guy? <laughs> no, the CEO of uh, Mixer. Body areas defined. Shoulders. Breastbone. The area on the body between the breasts. Bust line. On male presenting and female presenting, this is the widest area below the shoulders and above the end of the rib cage where a bra or pasties would be worn. Ribs. The bones that protect our insides. Waist. Between the end of the rib cage and the belly button. A few inches above the hips, often near the belly button. Hips. The bones at the top of your legs where they join your body. So from that point on, it goes through and it says all the things that you're not allowed to wear uh, based off of the the rating of your stream. Uh, family friendly stream. Clothing must cover the entire visible body from a few inches above the bust line. It cannot be strapless and shouldn't show little to no cleavage. Teen stream. Clothing can reveal more than a hint of cleavage, but still covers the entire visible body. Cannot be strapless. And then 18 plus stream. There's a lot here, so I'll just kind of read a couple of them. Clothing, it says, right, the chest must be covered from the bust line to the end of the rib cage. No under cleavage, no under boob. Um, strapless tops, only if the top can be clearly seen on camera. No one should have to guess if the streamer is wearing clothing. It says, when added, it is a situational appropriate clothing and all that stuff. So they are very, they are very, very clear on what and you could probably look at some of this and maybe interpret things a little bit differently and find a flaw right like some folks on reddit were like looking at things was like oh well i think i found a flaw it's like well i guess if you read it like an asshole then sure uh but or or if you're reading it in, the, in a way that you're trying to get over on the system then sure you could probably try to find a flaw but i think for the most part this is probably the most uh well this is this is probably the most um thorough you can get with a terms of service in terms of just attire and that's fucking awesome. That's fucking great because that's something that I mean, that's something that we feel we're missing on on Twitch, right? Um, you guys, this is too strict, but at least it's clearly defined and easily enforceable. I don't know how it would be. I don't know how it would be argued that it's too strict. I guess you can argue it would be a frivolous one. I would think because it's all very clear. And what is your argument going to be? Oh, I would. You know what? I'm a, I'm a family friendly stream, but I would really love for my titties to hang out, or I'd really love for my bulge to be showing. Like I feel like there's there's definitely uh, it's very difficult to, to argue, uh, through some of these points. Uh, they, they never mentioned that the butt has to be covered. Oh God, it does say, um, the entire visible body. So that does count that your butt does count as your body. I know that wasn't detailed up here. It doesn't say where your butt is up here. It doesn't say anywhere where your butt is, uh, but it does say nudity. Can we haggle in that? Wow. Just wanted to say that on stream. Um, <clears throat> so this is great. Uh, no, no one needs Common Core TOS. I fucking love that Common Core TOS. Oh man. Um, so ultimately, this they're off to a good start, man. Like they're off to a good start. They they have obviously had the benefit, and he talks about he talked about it in that in that audio clip. Uh, they have they've had the benefit of being able to actually observe Twitch and learn from their mistakes. Uh, and you know, hopefully, Twitch can also learn from Twitch's mistakes 
and continue to grow and, uh, and you know, remain competitive. Because again, there's going to be a whole gen. The mixer is basically positioning itself to be the family friendly streaming platform where you can, I mean, think of every fucking Xbox that you fired up and it's right there on the front page. Hey, look at this. You can stream on Mixer or you can watch a stream on Mixer. Hey, you're playing this game. Guess what? You can watch a shit on Mixer. This is, this is the same thing that Steam has. Steam has that same setup where if you go to a store page and the developer is streaming the game, their own game, then it'll show you at the top of the page and you can actually go through and watch that person stream. Uh, so this is, this is, this is a, because they're making the stream so accessible, they have to be as strict as possible. Twitch, I feel like has already developed enough of a, of a, of a, of a reputation where some folks might look at it and say, oh, like, for example, your mom that perhaps follows PETA on Twitter. Oh, my God, that's a platform that supports animal abuse. <laughs> like, that's, that, that's, well, I mean, that's, they're going to see that and they're going to be like, I don't want my kid looking at that. And so, and, and that's just, that's just the most recent example, right? Who knows what else, what else is there before that, that people will just kind of just come across their day to day when they're watching, I don't know, Fox News or something like that. And they um, and they see an article about Twitch and the kinds of things that are happening on Twitch and it, and you know Twitch being the biggest platform, they're going to be the biggest target, of course, for all these things. Uh, so Mixer has all the benefits of being able to basically watch this and actually start uh, uh, and build a platform that's family friendly. That way, they can they can just pipe it directly into everybody's everybody's Xbox, everybody's uh, your know, copy of fucking Windows. Right? It's like think about the install base that that microsoft already has this it's just absolutely massive so they 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 are positioned to uh <laughs> they're they're positioned to 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 take mixer and make it huge just because they have the outlets to do that they could just fucking do it it's easy um they just have to get the personalities on there first they net the biggest one on twitch right um arguably the biggest one because like from a global scale, right? More people know Ninja than Dr. Disrespect. But Dr. Disrespect's getting up there. More people know Dr. Disrespect than Shroud because of just, it's the personality thing, right? It's the character, it's the brand. More people know Dr. I mean, Shroud is the biggest streamer on paper, but in terms of brand, uh, so I wouldn't even put Soda up there. I would put, I wouldn't, I would put Soda. Soda is, is popular amongst us, amongst people who, wa who already watch Twitch and who already watch streams. Soda is popular with us. Um, whereas Dr. Disrespect has, is, has actually kind of broken out of that, um, getting super popular on Reddit because of the, uh, isn't exactly known for good reasons. Well, actually one of the biggest reasons why he got so popular was because he was, went to the fucking NBA playoffs with, uh, <laughs> in full fucking gear, you know? And that was at the top of Reddit it's forever. So yeah, it's, 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 the brand is definitely, um, for for Dr. Respect is going up, but Ninja already has a globally uh, established brand. So so they just uh so they they just bought that up and they're gonna be using that to their advantage going forward, and that's gonna be uh nothing but nothing but beneficial to Twitch. Nothing but beneficial. Uh honestly, I wouldn't know Doc Ninja or Shroud if I didn't follow drama news. <laughs> you know, everybody's got a way to kind of come across all these people. Otherwise, they're just like, who? Uh, somebody says, like, I don't know who Dr. Dis someone says who's Dr. Disrespect. Y'all can get banned. Um, <laughs> just playing games. Those tickets probably cost him over a hundred thousand dollars for the game. Uh, I, apparently, they were gifted to him. Apparently, they were uh, they were gifted or sponsored or something like that. And he went in full gear. And there's pictures of him, and people are like, "Who the fuck is this guy? Like wearing this crazy outfit, like, sunglasses, headphones, the whole thing, the whole thing." And he sticks out like a sore thumb because he's taller than everybody. He's as tall as one of the fucking players. It's like seven feet tall. Ridiculous. Speaking of a whole lot of money, did you guys hear about this uh, Fortnite competition? It was everywhere. So there was a Fortnite tournament that happened last uh, earlier this week, last week, this weekend, something like that. Um, the site loads hella slow. <laughs> I just I try to find an article. There were so many articles covering this. I try to find one that just that basically that, so, that basically just like was formatted the best because again there were so many articles from so many local publications that it was just like oh wow I can just find one that just basically fits my. Uh, that just fits the window pretty well. And this one fits the window pretty well. So there you go. Um, Fort what? <laughs> Fort what? Uh, even the losers made a lot of money. Well, 16-year-old Kyle Booga, Gearstorf, uh, wins Fortnite competition, takes home $3 million prize. This is the most 
single day earnings for a competitor, for a single competitor in the history of esports. I, I want to make sure I, I, I worded that very carefully. Okay. It is the most single day earnings for a single competitor in esports history. Okay. There. Okay. So, because I know some, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Okay. There's nothing else. All right. There's just, there's just this fucking 16 year old kid, 16 years old. What the, what the fuck? And he, I mean, he's fucking good. All right. Like he's, it's obviously good because he, he, you know, he, he won the fucking tournament, but, uh, but what's crazy is that <laughs> that's a lot to do. I mean, 16 years old, this guy's, this kid's gonna be rolling this shit. Um, but I mean, like then he does a press tour. So he's on good morning America answering questions about, uh, uh, answering questions about, about Fortnite. Oh, sorry. They're, 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 they're covering the whole thing and they have him in the studio. Right. So he's on fucking GMA. He, he, he actually got on, uh, on Jimmy Kimmel. All right. I'm oh, sorry. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Sorry. One of those guys. Uh, he's on, I actually wrote Jimmy Kimmel over here too. Whoops. Uh, this is huge. Like he's, he, he became, he just basically went from being a, a good, you know, Fortnite streamer, uh, competitor to being a household name amongst teenagers because every teenager would love to have that kind of fame for playing a fucking video game and have that kind of money. And he's a, he's a handsome kid too. Counterpoints all down the hill for him. He peaking at 16. Ouch. I will, I would be more happy to peak at 16 kittens. <laughs> Although his return, his return was actually pretty amusing uh, because uh, it was Basically nothing but stream snipers. Wait, dude, like, it's um, just like the sun just came. It, some of them now, some of them were just basically throwing themselves at him, but a lot of them were. Uh, I mean, you know, he basically killed everybody. Some of them were just emoting and whatnot. Uh, but three million dollars oh, for a sixteen-year-old. Every every damn outlet was covering this. Everybody was covering this. Guys, like not, this is no, great. <laughs> he still manages to pull this off. Fucking people what all over the place. Playing? He look, he look, he look, he look like a little kid. Did I look, I wonder if I, I look at old pictures of me. I wonder if I looked like a little kid like that when I was a little kid. Um, so yeah, kudos to this kid for making, uh, just stupid amounts of money and achieving every, every kid's dream of all time. Ever since video games came out, ever since the wizard came out, every kid wanted to be that 16 year old that won a huge tournament, got all this recognition and made a shitload of money off the deal. Ever since, yeah. The wizard, the wizard. If you don't know what the wizard is, well, I can't help you. But <laughs> what did your PC games look like when you were 16, though? Uh, I was playing 16. I was playing Marathon, probably Durandal uh, or Infinity, one of the two for sure. Uh, and then Rise of the Triad, Duke Nukem 3D, uh, Quake. So, yeah. And then get then later on that decade, we were getting into uh, uh, getting into what's it called uh, Unreal Tournament and all that stuff. So. So maybe our games just weren't good enough. That's what it was. We had to, I, I was a lay wrong generation is what it was. OG SimCity. UT2 when you were 16, those high school. Oh man. Oh, the lands were so good. Oh, Descent lands. Oh, oh, Descent 2. Descent 2. That was peak Descent right there, man. So good. There's been sequels, I guess, but we're right. Or like if Descent 1 was just okay, it was you know, good, but Descent 2 was just the best. Warcraft 2, so good. Anyways, yeah, yes. Okay, we could we could go down. We could go down that memory lane, but no, we got to stop. We got to keep going. We have we have some more news to cover. Next up, this one is actually uh, this is pretty interesting because I'm actually I'm actually curious what uh, what Uncle Chat's response to this would be. So there was a there was a stream. Actually, you know what? I'll just play I'll just play the damn the the clip for you because. Twitch has already confirmed it. This is totally cool, and that's totally fine, and I'm glad. Let's go ahead and play it, and I'll talk. I'll talk you guys through it. So this is Heather Kent on the right hand side. I don't know who the young lady on the left hand side is, but she is uh, a an ASMR streamer, and also she is um, uh, a uh, 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 an Instagram model. So she she had the audacity to feed her baby on stream. She had the audacity. It was terrible. 
I couldn't believe it. And and you know, it, it's funny because you know, they, even they're they're kind of joking around with it, like, oh, baby's got to eat, baby's got to eat, and it's like, yeah, your baby's got to eat. Now, for some, for some, I hope, hopefully, not for any of you, but for some folks, uh, this is like highly offensive for some reason. Breastfeeding in public. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Uh, apparently it's 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 a naughty thing, right? Uh, I will tell you where I stand on it. I I don't give a fuck. Like if somebody if 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 uh if a young woman or a lady or whatever wants to feed her baby on Bart or something, um, then fine. Bart is our is our uh, uh public transportation. Uh, then that's totally fine. I don't. It's 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 not sexualizing it in any manner, right? Um, not even a frame of a nipple there. Not in that clip. Uh, I intentionally left out the other clip because I, I felt like that'd be a little bit too targeted. Uh, but but you know she definitely it does it, it. I will agree that it seems odd that it's streamed, but only because it's just not. It's 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 still relatively uncommon to see. If I see somebody breastfeeding on the train, I will I will I will see that. I'll, I'll be like I'll be like oh I was like oh okay like because it, it's just like they just they just pull out the titty and just go and and you know as as a as a uh, uh, a heterosexual man like when I see. Uh, a breast, I'm automatically like, whoa, like you just look, you just, you just look, right? You see breasts, you just kind of look, right? So if somebody pulls out their breasts, you look at the breast and you're oh, she's breastfeeding. Okay, cool. Like it still kind of throws you off, right? Uh, the strange part is the odd part. It's even more public than just being out in public. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing. It's, there's still nothing wrong with it. And Twitch has backed them up and backed her up and said that there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and, but, but here's, I do agree that because it's okay, right? Which is, again, I agree with it. I think it's fine. Breastfeed your fucking baby. I mean, I, I fucking suck my mom's titty. Like, that's how I was. I, my Jen fed Declan. I mean, that's just part of life. Most of you guys probably sucked on titties before you were five years old, too. Um, and so TMI. TMI. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that either, actually. But, <laughs> uh, but the... 99.99% of babies, I would say, yeah, probably, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but there is, there's always a possibility that somebody, and Boots has beat me to it, that somebody will try to do the fake breastfeeding thing to get views because it gives them, somebody's going to try it. I mean, this is just, this is just a probability thing. It's, it's, it's the internet. Somebody out there is going to be like, oh shit, I just had a baby. Or someone's going to, or actually even worse, someone might be like, oh shit, I got a fake baby. <laughs> or my friend's got a baby. I'll borrow my friend's baby. <laughs> it's been a day or two, probably already happened. Uh, or, or, or nothing will ever happen. Nobody, it'll, it'll, it's not going to be a thing. It's going to be whatever. I mean, YouTube already has uh, tons of breastfeeding videos. They've already, they've already said it's totally fine, right? Uh, which is, again, Normalizing breastfeeding should be a thing, uh, but it's not like somebody's not going to take advantage of it, you know, eventually. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If somebody, if, 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 let me say this, I hope that somebody tries to push it with like a fake baby or, uh, or somebody else's baby just as an opportunity to, because that'll make for a really great news segment and even, and an even better thumbnail actually. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like they made a breastfeeding category. It's midstream. Baby got hungry. You got fed. No biggie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, there was a, there was a lot of folks that were really. Um, I mean, this is it. Shouldn't be surprising. It shouldn't be surprising that people would see that and just get really, you know, kind of like yikes about the whole deal. Um, I do wonder though. I do wonder if Mixer would allow would allow that because their rules very clearly state that you cannot show anything in that range and whereas twitch's guidelines are a little a little flim flam right they're a little flimsy flimsy they're they're they're, they're not really you know eh. i mean because we didn't she breastfed on stream nobody knew if you're allowed to do that and twitch had to come out and say yeah you could do that because we didn't know <laughs> breastfeeding is protected on a federal level isn't it i don't think so i mean maybe maybe well i don't know actually uh but but it, it doesn't really matter if it's a federal thing. I guess it's more it's more or less like the the stigma that uh, that you know women are trying to get over when it comes to uh, breastfeeding their kid. Uh, I feel like you're in your you're in your own home. You you're for lack of a better word, entitled to be put off. It's not like in public where you don't have a reasonable expectation to not see it. 
I'm not sure. Um, what is this? Public breastfeeding now legal in all 50 states. Well, there you go. Public breastfeeding. That's so weird. That has to be a thing, but I, I get it. Like, there's going to be some somebody out there who's going to be, uh, uh, I guess, conservative enough in the, in, the, in the actual literal sense of the word that they're not going to, uh, they're not going to want that. Oh, I can't, I can't have my kids see that and all that stuff. Well, I do. I, it's funny. I was joking with a friend of mine. I said, uh, and we were joking back and forth about how this is going to blow up and all that stuff. And it did. And, and I said, uh, and I was like, I was like, oh man, I hope they make a category for this so Declan and I can sit on the t- on the on the on the couch and watch <laughs> watch breastfeeding streams <laughs> yeah, because it should be normalized. Like, what? I gotta just show it to Declan. It's fine. It's, he's got to know that it's fine. I mean, he probably wouldn't even fucking flinch at the thing, right? The society tells us that it's just supposed to be a stigma there. Um, but just in case you were wondering, yes, you can breastfeed on Twitch. So for all of you expecting expecting uh, mothers and fathers. Uh, there you go. <sighs> Fucking Karen whining about breastfeeding in public. <sighs> in more normal everyday news type news, GameStop lays off dozens, about 50 or so, regional managers as it searches for a future. They left, they, uh, they uh, uh, laid off about 50 folks. Uh, yesterday, and this has been verified as an actual thing. It doesn't really seem, 50 doesn't really seem like a lot, considering that uh, that GameStop has, are you guys still, are, are we still talking about titties though? Hold on a second, did I move on too quickly? I'm sorry. But we have to move on, alright? Better use my gift cards. Yeah! You should use your gift cards. I got the beer burps here. Uh, there's no telling how much longer GameStop's gonna last. They're They're positioning themselves when you start to see layoffs and you see closures, we've had actually two GameStop closures over here in the Bay Area that I, that that are local-ish to me. Um, it it yes, wow, it is the slowest death ever. Absolutely, I yeah, and I love I love my GameStop. The one that's that's uh, uh, there's one that's not close to me anymore, but there's uh, there's still one that's a reasonable distance that I like to take Declan to because I want him to experience brick and mortar stores before they all disappear. Right, I want him to grow up and be like. Man, when I was a kid, we used to go to the store and you wouldn't believe it. They had video games all over the walls and you could just go up and just pick one and just go to the counter and that's it. You go home. You don't have to wait until something gets delivered to your door. You know, like it's it's like that's going to be a story that's going to end up telling his, you know, grandkids or some shit when like every brick and mortar store ever has been just dismantled and Amazon is droning in uh, things. Anyways, so um, they've had a GameStop has had a very, very rough year they're they're down in basically every possible thing you could you could every possible metric you could think of they're down um they're up in layoffs i guess but when i saw that they laid off their district leaders or dls uh that they call them um i thought that was kind of interesting because in another life i was supposed to be a district leader for gamestop Back this so little story time, back in uh uh 2007, so about 12 years ago, mid 2007, CompUSA closes down. I get a fat severance check, and um, and I'm like, okay, cool, this is a lot of money. I could just like kind of you know, get get an apartment because me and my girlfriend had broke up at the same time that my store was closing down. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'll just get an apartment. I put a down payment on uh, as a roommate in some some other uh, person's apartment, or whatever. But um, I put it, I put a deposit down for it. It was like a thousand bucks, but I didn't care. Like seven thousand dollars, like I'm fucking rich. Uh, and I started applying for jobs. I went to GameStop and I applied and I got accepted. And I was supposed to start working as a district leader. Now, a district leader is a uh, is basically in charge of several stores. They have like the regional managers, which are, as the name would imply, regional. So it'd be like somebody who's in charge of uh, uh, of, of of Vegas, Phoenix. And then maybe like Baker Barstow or something like that, right? They're kind of in charge of this like region. And then, uh, and then GameStop, or sorry, then the district leader would be in charge of several stores within Vegas. And so I was supposed to be hired on directly as a, uh, as a district leader. And, and, and I ended up at the very last second, both bailing on that, uh, on that apartment and thus losing my deposit, uh, and bailing on this job opportunity and moving out to the Bay Area. Uh, to sleep on my friend's couch <laughs> and I just loaded up the ranger and then came out here uh, and that's basically how all this shit started 
It's, so I was so yeah. In another life, I was absolutely supposed to be one of these guys who's probably laid off. Uh, you know, one of the district leaders. Are they offering a twenty percent extra on severance if they take it as store credits? <laughs> I don't know what their I don't know what their severance packages they're giving out. Uh, I don't actually know if they mention anything. See, regional leaders, district leaders, most districts and regions, most districts and regions are massive now. Uh, DLs have twenty plus stores, and quality of living I would assume is going to go down. Yeah, because you're supposed to basically go and visit a different store every other day or something. You have like a centralized, you know, uh, uh, office that you work out of. But for the most part, you're you're working out of offices that are located in the back of stores. And so you're supposed to, you have like a home store that you would hang out in and then you would basically travel to all these stores. And so, yeah, I would be, I would have been in charge. I mean, at this point, 10 years later, I would have been in charge of probably all the Vegas stores because I know, I know that I would have been a good employee because I usually am a good employee. Uh, and I know I would have, uh, probably not moved up the ranks. <laughs> I just probably would have stayed at district leader and just gotten more and more 10 years, the same job position. Who knows? Um, Personally, I'm glad to see them go. They are responsible for so many shitty video game industry practices. Unique pre-order bonus causing content to be split. The birth of online passes. So, uh, uh, to fight pre-owned sales. Uh, pushing out to register up sale. Only carrying new release or for pre-orders. Well, while I agree with you, I will still miss them. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you, Larenside. But if the, I'll still miss them if they leave. I'll still miss them if, 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 they, uh, if they end up closing down. It would be it would be pretty sad. Um, most of that is not GameStop. Well, they definitely helped aid in the practice, though, for sure. Especially when it comes to pre-order stuff, um, because they they were pushing pre-orders like massively before before anybody else really was. Best Buy started doing pre-orders and making that a big old thing well after GameStop did, uh, as well as everybody else. Slowing down as the future is digital. Uh, yep, because it is. Next up. Speaking of digital, I know a lot of you guys are uh, a business is supposed to be adapt toward a changing market. GameStop just refused to. Are you kidding me? They absolutely. They, I mean, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but I feel the opposite. I feel like they they created this market, which we all fucking hate, but as a necessity. That they didn't necessarily create it, but they aided in, they aided in the creation of this market of our current market. Uh, out of out of necessity just to keep the business going and now they're now they've fallen behind completely like because they they did help you know convert and everything but they're still a brick and mortar store they still have overhead of having rent labor all that stuff whereas amazon doesn't have the amp that they don't have stores well they kind of do now they don't they don't really pay their labor so they don't have any <laughs> they don't have it i'm just kidding amazon if you're watching uh I'm just waiting for that thing to chime in right there um so it's inevitable that brick and mortar stores that don't have a um you know a strong web presence is going to here here's what they should have done game to 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 just add a few more years gamestop and gamespot should have just merged they should they sh they sh they should have just just stopped the confusion and just merge and they probably would have got a few more years out of the deal they probably would have lasted a few more years but nope they're both just dying on their own little separate corners gamestop and gamespot going the way of blockbuster ah uh, yeah you know what there's gonna be that one there's gonna be that one gamestop that's gonna that's gonna thrive and it's going to have a, a, a Twitter, like the last Blockbuster. Do you guys follow the, like, the last Blockbuster Twitter? It's great. Um, anyways, moving on. I know a lot of you guys are, are uh, uh, Crash Bandicoot fans. I just assume this, but... If you're wondering, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is getting microtransactions, microtransactions in the, uh, the next... Uh, or in, in a post-launch update. So... So this is a thing now. <sighs> Launch a game, get reviews, then add your microtransactions. I have a list of other people that did this. And this is just two seconds to find, by the way. Sea of Thieves did it. Black Ops did it. Four. Battlefield 5 did it. Gran Turismo, 5, Gran Turismo Sport did it. This is this is the next stage in trying to trying to have your cake and eat it too, trying to get that good launch day review and then add in your store. 
That way, all of those numbers are there. The meta, the meta score is there. And then you just come in later and then drop in your actual cash shop. But what is list of games I will not play? Yeah, lock in that meta. Yep, lock in that. Just lock it in. This is something that we're probably going to see more of in the future, for sure. So every game that's launching where they're like, oh, we don't have any microtransactions. Like if, if the CTR people said that, I would be like, of course, what kind of microtransactions are you going to put into a Mario Kart game, right? Or Carter. Well, <laughs> I guess they figured out what to put in because they have a fucking star going up. Um, so honestly, I'm okay with this. And that's fine if you're okay with it. But it still is a little slimy. It's just a little bit sleazy. It's a little bit... I can't think of any other S words like that. But uh, shitty. There you go. Uh, yeah, to come out and then basically reap the benefits of having you know good reviews and everything and then later slide in your, your microtransactions. Because not everybody, not every... While CTR's case, maybe it's just cosmetics or whatever. In, I think, Battlefield 5? Or was it Battlefront 2? No, Battlefront 2 lost. They, they took out the microtransactions and later brought them back after everything calmed down. Um, but in, there's going to be, there's certain cases where the transactions, microtransactions are not just, um, that they're not, they're not just cosmetic and they're actually like, you'll pay to win and all that stuff. But because we're past, we're past the review period, well, then they don't have to necessarily worry about the score being driven down. Um, you have no issue with it being falsely advertised as not having microtransactions? Oh, I think you're talking to somebody else. And so that's the thing. Or oh, they can do this Warcraft 3 Reforged too. So this was actually, you know, it's funny. When I did my Google search, uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged did come up. And there is actually, uh, on Battle.net, there was a forum post where uh, somebody was discussing the possibility of Warcraft 3 Reforged having microtransactions in it for, like, skins and whatnot. Um, now, Blizzard has not said that the, whether or not there's going to be microtransactions in uh, War 3 Reforged. But if they didn't say... Or if they said they didn't, where they weren't going to have them, and then later add them, like six months later they add them, then that would feel a little disingenuous. That'd feel a little, little, little bit disingenuous. Um, I want to say that Crash Team Racing is Activision. I'm fairly certain Crash Team Racing is Activision. So, and Warcraft 3 is Activision. So, maybe um, Stargraph Remaster Carbot skin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> huh? We're gonna three forge, pay us a couple dollars, and uh, and you can play. You play as Arthas. It's Activision, of course. They'll add them to Warcraft. Battlefront micro transactions equals bad. Hearthstone micro transactions is fine. If I could reskin my cards in Mario Kart, I'd be fine with that. If I didn't want to, it wouldn't bother me being in. You know, it's really hard to have a to build like a set of guidelines as to what you consider to be bad or good because there's all these there's always like some new way that they're doing it there's always some new combination of things that they're giving away or some new thing that they're selling remember when it used to just be xp boosters it was like just xp boosters or like uh uh what is it called like reveal discovery scrolls or whatever that different name in every game but basically a scroll you buy to like that would uh um reveal uh, an item stats or something to you there's that's the way it started and then it just now it's like so complex and every game has their very own take on what their um what microtransactions are that's really hard to have like a firm because for me it's like with trials uh uh rising that was all that was all uh, uh what is it cosmetic cosmetic stuff right so i was just kind of like whatever it's cosmetic stuff i don't really give a shit the main game is there uh, later on, I realized the main game was actually kind of shit, and I kind of was a little upset by that because of the progression and all that, but that's another story. Uh, exactly, let's says people hear microtransactions immediately just assume it's vile and game-breaking without taking even a second to look at what they actually are. So that, that's that's my point, is that it's hard to have a firm stance on on microtransactions because they keep on, cha they keep on changing the deal. <laughs> they keep on changing the deal. Um... For those out there, because it's always ignored, just because you are fine with microtransactions doesn't mean that they are not predatory for those with mental conditions and addictions to gambling from loot box style micros. I, I agree with that. Kittens may not. I, what, no, I think Kittens does not agree with that sentiment when it comes to kids abusing their parents' wallet. Is that right, Kittens? I think, and which is a, which is a valid thing to say, uh, I think. But 
Um, but I mean, but Ira does have a point as well. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like that, this is what I'm saying. Like because because the 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 microtransactions um, market is so convoluted, it's it's so fucking hard. You can't just come out and say I'm against microtransactions in video games because chances are at some point in time you paid for what would technically be considered a microtransactions, but you just didn't know it because in the grand scheme of things, it's just one tiny little star in this fucking galaxy of different combinations of things you could do to make to sell things uh on, on a on a game post launch uh, as a whole i would say my are perfectly okay and free to play games ignoring the type that can be bad in premium games it is often seen as very bad because they lock stuff behind the initial price and then more money so you aren't you've given the entire game uh and that and, and that, that's the thing i agree with that too like all these crazy skins you could you could buy like what happened to unlocking skins <laughs> what happened to like achieving these feats in games and then unlocking a special skin to show that you have achieved this feat that that's that that was a thing it was like now felt like okay well now it's all just behind a store but every game is different i can't give you a good example because every game is going to handle that differently um those in the season pass now yeah and considering the whole store story recently with uh, how high school referring negatively to people with no fortnite skins as defaults you can't say that the cosmetics are fine because they're just cosmetic because those skins are given value by the community thanks to the way they're pushed by developers this you know and you know what era that actually kind of crosses into the whole uh it's, it's you know obviously a form of bullying uh but it's like when you go to school and you're not wearing you're wearing xj 900s and you're not wearing nikes um people will see it they'll point it out they'll make fun of you right uh, that's just, that's just your run of the mill bullying. So I don't think the problem there is microtransactions so much as it, as it is, uh, bullying as a whole, because that's always been there. Uh, didn't see the story area, but it's, uh, that is just kids being shitty. Yep. There you go. New age, new age bully. There you go. New age bully. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> that, the, the, the thing now, anyway, anyways, uh, next up. <laughs> Speaking of things we all love, fucking Mikey typed out a great explanation that covered exactly what you just said. There you go. See, just going to swoop in there, just take it from her. Just taking it, just taking it from you. There you go. Let me take a sip here because we're getting into Epic Game Store territory now. <sighs> all right. So there's this game. That none of you guys have really heard of, but you've probably seen the video at a release, like maybe at the, maybe a convention or something, right? A stream. You probably saw a video of this. Uh, we covered MechWarrior last week. Not Cyberpunk. Don't worry, they're safe. Just check it. So there's a game called Ooblets. What a poem. There's a game called Ooblets. Ooblets. Yeah, Ooblets. I'll show you. It looks like this. Cute little monsters, right? I don't know what the purpose is of the game. I don't care what the purpose of the game is. Visually, it's it's it looks it's a cute little monster game, right? Um PS in the article that I'm about to read to you, the best part about it is how they describe how they at the end they talk about how they use motion capture and try to get try to capture somebody flossing in order to for this particular GIF. Uh, and so that actually makes his gift even that much funnier because the person clearly cannot fall floss. Um, isn't that dance trademark gross? So it's one thing, like, let's look at Mech Warrior. We covered that last week. They came out and they were like, listen, we're going, we're, we're going, we're going, we're going to Epic. If you want a refund, fine. We're doing this because we got to do this. It was, it was amicable. Like you read it, it was kind of like, okay, cool. That was that was a good way to do that. Not that anybody has to have has to, you know, uh, have a, you know, communicate to their audience in a way that I deem being good. But you should at least not do it like an asshole. Maybe maybe ditch the condescending tone. Already, without even clicking on anything, it says, OK, so we did the thing, the thing people get angry about. But maybe don't get angry about it. It's like, oh. And then it says here, it says, I know this is a hot button issue for, uh, for some folks, but getting some funding is going to make a huge difference for Ooblets. We're chatting with folks in the community via email and on Discord if you have questions or concerns. So I read the article. So we did the thing. 
we get the same little gift here. It goes through and it talks. Everyone kept talking about the epic thing, so we thought we would uh, see what it's all about. Here's what epic folks are doing. The first, they teach the kid, every kid in the world, these obnoxious dances. Now they're offering funding for game developers in exchange for PC exclusivity. Blah 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 blah. This is exactly what Mark's warned us about. Uh, da, 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 da. It says, "Okay, so goofing aside, we have signed with Epic for PC launch exclusivity. It's incredible news for us. They're saying that they're going to be able to make enough money uh, from the get-go because they have guaranteed sales." Epic's very open about this. They're going to give them enough money to uh, to basically certify the X number of sales, uh, an amount that's equal to a certain number of sales. Um, and then, and it's fine. And it says right here, what it means to you. You'll have to install EGS if you want to buy Ooblets on PC. I know that's asking a lot, but I believe in you and your abil ability to download a free thing and create a user account. So we're kind of getting a little condescending here, but that's fine. Maybe that's just a humor. Um, and so, I scroll down a little bit more. Is it Angry Epic? Us? The world? And he basically, he or she, I don't know who wrote this, uh, they kind of go into this whole thing where, like, first it was like, it was like, oh, I don't have to start living with my parents anymore. Let me go back. Here we go. The game won't fail. We won't be forced to move back in with our parents. But we do love and appreciate you parents. Like, it was very wholesome. Why do we do this? It's like, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, that's their thing. I didn't, I never heard about your game until, until this thing came up, but I wish you, I wish you luck. And then it goes down here. And the only reason why this shit is on this fucking show is because from this point forward, it basically gets pretty fucking condescending. Uh, and it says it's anti-consumer to have exclusive. This is the most common complaint about Epic, but I don't think, I don't think people have really thought it through. I can understand the frustration of having to buy different consoles to play games you want, but there's no extra cost for EGS. The store and the launcher just require a free sign-up. It's not like having to pay for HBO or, X or Netflix or Hulu. It's kind of like pushing a button, changing the TV channels. It's all. It's also uh, really disappointing to see folks threatening to pirate a game just because you can't. They can't get the launcher uh, and the launcher that they're used to, which is, of course, don't pirate the game, right? Uh, feel like you're owed the product of others' work on your terms, or else you steal the epitome of the world. The word entitlement that people use to discuss immature, toxic gamers. Oh, oh, okay. So, all right. Uh, I get the appeal of wanting to seek out things you're angry about. Venting anger is cathartic and natural. But let's just have a little perspective about what we decide to get angry about. Look at the things that are going on, going on around you and ask yourself if there might be anything just a tad more worth, worthwhile to be upset about. Here are just a few suggestions. Climate change, human rights abuses, the new Twitter desktop UI, the last season of Game of Thrones. And it says those last two are jokes. Please don't yell at them about them. Which is weird because those last two are the ones I'm probably the most upset about because the ones I have the most impact on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it says, so let's remember that this is a low stakes video game stuff we're dealing with. Nothing to get worked up about. And I, Ben, per lamps, per lamps, uh, will be around on Discord to answer any questions. And then it says all this stuff, whatever. Um, it does, it does feel, yeah, it does feel like a don't you all have phones kind of moment. It does. Uh, don't pirate it. Don't really worth, it's not really worth getting if it's not really worth paying for. Now, I will say that there's... Like, they've gotten a lot of kickback for this, obviously. Folks that have been supporters for a long-ass time, and then they feel like they've been abandoned to go to, uh, uh, to, go to Epic. Because these game companies are selling to the store, not to the customer. And so you work on this product, and then you, know, you, you see the security of having these sales, right? This guaranteed amount from Epic, and you think, okay, cool, that's, that's going to be guaranteed money. That's gonna be guaranteed sales, but not really though. Like that could actually you you might not sell basically anything because you're on a platform that a lot of a lot of folks are like in, they're steering clear of. Um, there are also I should mention this because there's enough of this that I kind of feel like there is some truth here. But there are some, and I don't know if I can find them now. But there there are some Discord screenshots where apparently they are extraordinarily condescending inside of the Discord when uh, addressing certain issues. And of course, I can't find any. Let me see, Discord, nothing, of course. Sorry, I, sh I should have uh, grabbed a screenshot there. Um, but here, is this it here? Mm, let's see. Yeah, here we go. This is actually, this is great because I've seen now two different screenshots from two different, one, this is from uh, mobile or something, and the other one was from... Uh, uh, PC. So that actually adds to the validity of this. 
So it says, what option do the, so this person's asking a question, what option do people that literally cannot buy the game now due to Epic not supporting their currency have? Which is a real thing. Uh, I want to buy the game, but now I am 100% unable to since I don't have the means to do so. Does that, does not wanting to support Epic Games make me an entitled angry child child just because my country isn't allowed to buy games in my own currency? Am I an enraged man baby due to the fact that even if I did buy it, it would cost me more than it should? And then you got a response from the developer, uh, one of the ones who was, uh, uh, who wrote the article or wrote that blog. And it said, you'll have to wait, I guess. Nobody owes you the game. That's... That is such a shitty thing to say. And that's just, that's just one... One example. Like, there, there were several uh, screenshots. And again, I can't vouch for the validity, but I can say that I've seen now two screenshots of this exact conversation from two different platforms. And so I'm fairly certain this shit is, is, is real. So... If you are interested in Ooblets, just know who you're buying it from. Because I would not, I would not. <laughs> it's so infuriating to see people talk to other people, whether or not they are a subordinate or a customer or a friend or whatever, in such a condescending tone. It's, it's just, yeah, I just, I can't, I fucking flabbergasted. This ain't it, Chief, yet. Yeah, this ain't it, Chief doesn't even begin. <laughs> To, to explain how, how this ain't, <laughs> okay? Um, and so, yeah, I hope the game fucking bombs. <laughs> I'm sorry for the five people working on it, but I really hope the game fucking bombs, so that way, at least it sends an example to not be a fucking asshole. There's only one, there's only one Phil Fish. We can't, we can't just keep pumping out new Phil Fishes, man. We've got one. <laughs> And he wasn't even that bad. <laughs> uh, the reason why devs go to Epic to sell their games is because they don't have faith in their product. Yeah. And that's, you know, I, that's, that's a scary thing, man. Like, it's a gamble. Like, it's scary. It's scary for the developer because it's a gamble. You're putting out a piece of content and you're hoping that it does well, right? Uh, it could fall flat. It could get buried in Steam. It could get buried on Xbox. It could get buried, whatever. Yeah, just deal away. Um, Epic is, is giving them an option to take money up front to guarantee the sales and people that are taking those sales. It does. It seems like, oh, you, you really, you really have such little faith in your product that you're willing to, uh, just take the money up front. Uh, comments like that remind me of why I believe people, uh, should have a two year customer service requirement for they turn 21. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh my God. Yes. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Oh man, I, I, I'm gonna just keep scrolling here. Maybe I got lucky and find another fucking screenshot, but it was just, um, it was, it was, a, it was just disheartening to see. Mm, mm, eh. It was just a little, little sad. Uh, my big question is, is Epic's telling these devs to do this as this is not the first dev team to do this. I don't think any develop, I don't think Epic is telling developers to be dicks. Mech Warrior, the Mech Warrior team did a great job with how they approached it. They are very, they're very upfront. This is what we're doing. This is, you could get a refund. It was just kind of like, cool. Um, what is this? Uh, uh oh, what is this? Uh, okay, so we have a couple of more screenshots here. Oh, there's a ton here, actually. Let's see. If anything, you guys make, uh, if anything, you guys make me want to rip into gamers more. Uh, I think when a lot of the kids here get older and have and, and have to get jobs, their idea of what selling out is will change. I don't understand what people use shopping carts for in video game storefronts. Oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, but you got to realize you aren't just talking directly to 4chan Redditors. That's a post for, to, to everyone who is or slash was interested in the project. I get the pre-frustration, but like, come on, man. Kill my enthusiasm for the game to see the blog being so condescending to all your fans. The frothing, the frothing anger over literally a free game launcher you don't like is proof that the tone matched the target of that tone. And that target is not the audience of Ooblets, who is honestly above that stuff. Oh man, they're so far above my wallet right now. Like, I can't even, I can't even imagine. Jesus Christ. Honestly, the biggest reason we didn't do a Kickstarter is we didn't want to deal with entitled baby gamers holding even more power over us. Uh, look how the devs are responding. They clearly couldn't care less if you buy the game or support them now that they have their epic cash. Man, I wish we didn't take the epic deal so we we would have to care about all the entitled toxic gamers thing. This is some this is some 
This is some fucking, what is it? Uh, get woke, go broke shit. Man, man, man. Just, it's the YouTube response all over. Yeah, it's the fucking yikes, man. It's a huge fucking, it is, there's so many more. Uh, I feel like equating business communication businesses. Oh, wait, I feel like equating business, commute, that. Nah. I feel like equating communicating business decisions from dev to consumer and in-game character dialogue feels really weird. And he says, the content of our game reflects us in the same way uh, us not bending over backward to baby gamer does. Wow, man. Woo! Wow. That's, um, yeah, that's, that, it's funny because I put this in because it was really shitty and it just got worse. <laughs> And it just fucking got worse. Like the more we dig into it, it's like, God damn, it just keeps getting fucking worse. So uh, that's yeah, that they, they certainly don't give a fuck. Uh and I feel bad for the other three people they have on their team because they said they have five people. They have their money, yeah. So they don't give they extra don't give a fuck now. This is what happens with spanking your kids is illegal. <laughs> they made it clear their customer's epic and not us. And that's a thing. With 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 a lot of these again, Mech Warrior excluded, and probably some others if we go and look into it, because there's so many that are that are switching, right? Uh, is that the approach seems so? It just it just seems so. It's almost like we're seeing them for who they really are, uh, because they got the money. Before it was like they're 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 trying to make a sale, which is part of being a developer, part of being a dev studio, you're trying to make a sale. That's how you fucking stay afloat. Uh, and so you have to put on a face and you have to have a presentation, and everything, um, and. Epic is actually showing us who it's it's unveiling the uh the villain. <gasps> oh my god. It's Phil Fish. <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Uh it really is actually showing us who is uh you know who's genuine in their support for uh for consumers. And god, and you know. One thing that I get, I get whenever I talk about the Epic Game Store and all that stuff, and like feature, the features is always my biggest point, right? About you know Steam versus Epic, um, and people say they have a roadmap. Thankfully, somebody on Reddit is keeping track, and it says another month has passed, and Epic missed their roadmap goals just again. Top it all off, they claim that they have shipped cloud saves as a feature, even though only two games of more than one hundred have it. Other features such as mod support, user reviews, achievements, wish lists, and shopping cart are perpetually four to six or six or more months away, effectively getting delayed with each passing month. How this ties in as to why this is uh, something to discuss is because Randy Pitchford, y'all remember, Randy. Uh, he, made a, he made a comment, a statement. He says, Epic has published a near-term roadmap. This roadmap includes... Uh, a look into things they are committing to. If I were a betting man, I would expect that there are more things that happen than what they are committing to. We also must acknowledge that Borderlands 3 does not exist today, but rather it will exist in September. The store will be different when the game launches. It will become a boon to the store if they bring sufficient features to make their customer experience great for us. Epic will suffer again if by the time Borderlands 3 launches, the customer experience is not good enough. Well, there's only about a month left. It's entirely possible that there's a fucking fat epic patch that comes out and it updates the whole store. It is entirely possible, but boy, that clock is ticking. That clock is ticking. I will say, in Epic's defense, roadmaps are always pushed back. Roadmap, and you, you should all know this, okay? This is why when people talk about, oh, they have a roadmap. Dude, that doesn't mean shit. That just means they have a list of ideas, okay? Sure, that part's easy. Just because they put them in some kind of order, that doesn't mean anything. That was just, that's just put in a specific order so you could go to the shareholders and say, this is what we plan on doing. But 99% of the time, that shit gets pushed back, or changed, or something. One week turnaround on new Fortnite features, one year turnaround on new EGS features. Fucking word? Seriously. <laughs> like, that's... Yeah! Man! EGS will get a huge patch... <laughs> Apple Maps, yeah. They'll get a huge, uh, uh, a huge patch to fix a launcher, and Borderlands 3 will pay for it! Oh, man. The, shop, the shopping cart should have been on the roadmap, should have been there from the start. Yeah, you know... It, <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know where Epic is spending their, their Fortnite money. I know where 3 million of it went recently. More than that. 
Uh, but other than that, I have no idea where their money goes or how much of it goes where. But man, it would be nice to have some kind of features. The comparison of Epic Game Store and Steam and Mixer and Twitch is equally as funny because, like we discussed earlier, Mixer is feature rich. It's not feature complete, but it is absolutely feature rich. Epic Game Store is not feature rich, nor feature complete. Steam is feature rich. You could almost argue that it is almost feature complete. Everything else they add is going to be, you know, probably small things here or there. Uh, what is the Trello board? Oh, yeah, this is the Epic Game Store roadmap. There you go. So what's coming up? Recently shipped features. It says Cloud Saves release. Two games. Two games out of hundreds. Uh, Ubisoft titles. Okay. Ubisoft titles require large installs, library improvements, store page redesign, store video hosting, improved patch sizes, player time, playtime tracking, humble bundle integration. None of these I feel like are, are, are necessarily like needed. Um, over here, four to six months, user reviews, please, wish list, please, uh, news feed, price adjusting bundles, uh, adjustable payment methods, additional payment methods, yes, please. Additional currencies, absolutely, please. Mod support, fuck yeah, sure. Epic Games Overlay, sure, why not? Sure. Please, achievements, shopping cart, long term, direct carrier billing, uh, social overhaul, automated refunds, gifting, Android store. It's almost like this list is backwards. I mean, there's some stuff in that first page. I mean, like where it makes the near term that you kind of want to have, right? But, but still, like I mean, player player playtime tracking that does that doesn't say consumer support to me, because consumers would much rather have more options to buy the game versus knowing how much time they're playing the game they can't buy. So that just tells me even their roadmap is geared towards not consumers. <laughs> it's geared towards industry shit. It's data gathering. Absolutely. They want to make more money. Whoa, man. Oh, 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 oh. But speaking of comparing that shit, Ooblets tweeted out uh, this was yesterday, following the Ninja thing. Anyone hear about Ninja? I guess they're trying to kind of... Oh, he's exclusive to, Twi to, to Mixer. Whereas, uh, that shit doesn't apply. And everybody in the comments let them know. Did you know that instead of posting this, you could be helping solve climate change? It's a more pressing issue after all. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and favorite that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh that's fucking great. You know what? Uh, Namaste. Uh, she's she's Jewel. She's the reason why I actually saw this tweet because it showed up in my feed and it said it said uh, uh it said Namaste has liked this post, and I was all like, this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I I had already grabbed all the pieces for this story and I put it in my in my notes, and then that should happen. Oh man, just keep adding to it. Just keep adding to it. Burned by the rise of global temperatures caused by global warming. That's right. I'm all for game devs and making money, provided it's from customers, please. And just don't be shitty. They're just shitty people. You know, maybe maybe amongst their friends, they're like not shitty, but who cares? Like you're you're not selling your game to your fucking friends. <laughs> That's not you, you have to you have to like you know at least not come across as an insufferable asshole to the people who are supposed to be buying your products. Um, oh, you're a game, you must be a Fortnite player. <laughs> yeah, you must be entitled. <laughs> you don't have to install Mixer on your PC. And why, it, it, why don't they try and solve crime instead of making games? Duh. I know. Just be Wally and shut up and work on your game. Just not decades, please, please. Yeah. Yep. In other news, smaller news. Wow, that, that was all the big shit. Whoa. In other news, and this, is, this might be a surprise to some, that... They're, they're actually still a thing for like a long time there, but the, the Blizzard Authenticator is no more. They are no longer producing or manufacturing Blizzard Authenticators. If you have an Authenticator, save it. It might be worth some money someday, like a hundred years or so, but you never know. The apps still work though. I know. I, I think every. I think everybody who's ever played a Blizzard game somehow manages to have like, <laughs> like one just lying around. I mean, I went to BlizzCon. I have one. I never used it, but yeah, they 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 don't use them anymore. 
Uh, what does it say? This is so all Blizzard customers have a phone. Right, so next BlizzCon, y'all have phones now. See? Exactly. Well, you have to in order to actually get in. Because you have to have the actual app in order to get in the AXS app. Ridiculous. And other news, other, other news. I saw, I, I, I happened to come across a moment, a gamer moment, that I could relate to from a good friend of mine, and that some of you guys know, AJ. Now this is this is just fun shit. All right, we're past we're past all the bullshit. Um, AJ had a a moment that I think all of us have had, where you well, how about his play. He's doing a no damage run, okay, in Castlevania. I think this is two. Uh, no, this is Castlevania one. I think uh, one and three look the same. For fuck's sake. Anyway, he it's a heat, heater gear. It's happy news. Happy news. Happy news. Here we go. Yes! No damage! Do! <laughs> this shit is my favorite! <laughs> I was holding left. <laughs> Yes! I just love it so much! No damage! Do! Even just... He's like... <laughs> he's all, yes! No damage! Yeah! Oh, it's just the best. We've all been there. We've all we've all done this. I'm just so happy that, that there's, there's now a beautiful clip that I can just put in my bookmarks and never look at it again, but at least it'll be there. Oh, man. He wanted to smash that controller. <laughs> oh, I was gonna go to the contra run and die at the heart at the end. Oh god. Oh, you know we've been watching. Um, Declan and I have been watching uh, uh, no damage runs for Mega Man, uh, and seeing how close some of these guys get to almost taking damage, I'm just like, oh my god. I would like first off, just beating the games were hard enough to do take no damage for the whole run. Fuck that. Um. So yeah. Uh. Last up, more good news, more good news. Tool. This is huge news, actually. This is fucking huge news. Tool, the band. Remember them? I hope so. They, the full catalog is available for streaming on basically every platform available. And this is... This is massive, man. Like, Tool was never really against. I read an article about this, right? An interview a long time ago. Um, Mater and, and all of them, they were never really against digital distribution. They didn't want their albums experienced piecemeal. They didn't want to make a best of a greatest hits album. Uh, and they didn't want their songs to be taken out of context. If you've ever listened to a Tool album, Outside of probably Undertow, uh, most of the albums are very much almost like concept albums. Um, they do have like a, a kind of a steady theme, right? That kind of develops throughout the entire thing. And you pretty much have to listen like two or three songs at a time. Yeah, like Hooker with a Penis, for example. Um, it's great storytelling. And yeah, it's a music artist. Oh, you're for reals? Yeah, Tool is a music artist. Um, but now you can listen to their tracks, all their tracks, and all last night and this morning, I've just been listening to Tool. I'm not the biggest, I'm not like a crazy Tool fan, I'm actually more of a Perfect Circle fan, but I've never, but I think it also could be just because I've never really had a good opportunity to listen to it outside of like MP3s that I downloaded from, in, in, from Napster in 2001, 2002. And I think I own, I did own 10,000 Days, I love 10,000 Days, um, but it was on a CD, and we moved on from CDs! So yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm basically like re-falling in love with Tool now this is available here. And, um, and it's fucking great. So big news if y'all are a Tool fan. If you're not a Tool fan, but you like metal with like crazy syncopation and crazy drum signatures and all that shit, and you wanted to hear like weird kind of uh, almost progressive metal or something, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, then Tool is definitely a place to go. They're, they're a band to check out for sure. Should have gone cassette. That's right. Fucked up. I do wonder how they split the albums on cassette, though, because 
because the album the album's gonna split. It's gotta split somewhere. Tape's only so long on one side. Pocket was really happy about this. Pocket's the biggest Tool fan I know. Uh, wouldn't any fan of Tool already have their music in a digital library already? Perhaps, but not necessarily accessible. I I I am a huge fan of so many bands that I only listen to on uh, on um. Uh, on Spotify, and if they don't have an album Spotify, I just don't listen to it anymore. I just don't. Uh, Pitch Shifter is a great example. Uh, Shenan, Shenan, Shenandoah, I think is the name of the album. Uh, that was their most recent album. Is not on Spotify. I love that album. I think it's so good, but it's not available anywhere, so I just don't listen to it. And I think even even a big Tool fan is not going to have the entire collection readily available, and it's a pain in the ass to have to go and listen to it. <clears throat> I will. I still get the CDs, buy them on Amazon, and then download them to Amazon Music, and then to any other media player you want. Yeah, you could do that. Google Play did the same thing. I have a shitload of music on Google Play. Unfortunately, Google Play is yeah, <laughs> which is shutting down. Um, but it's also it was. It's not quite as as accessible as Spotify. Gotta be the path of least past path of least resistance. Um, just buy a vinyl player mic and get with the time. Dude, I fucking want, I want a record player so bad. I want one so far. I have one record. I have one record and I, I, but I still want one so bad because I just want to hear it. I just want to, I want to go and get my mom's record collection and bring it here because she's not listening to it anymore. And she's got all these great fucking albums from the, from the sixties and seventies. She's got so fucking many and I want it so bad, but we're still doing news. Let's stay on topic here. Anyways. Uh, so that's it. Yes, what did it say in a second? Yeah, you can look forward to it. There is a new uh, Don't Man's Sky update coming August 14th. We'll probably talk about it next week. Um, the picture of the latest album was PSI, but awesome. Oh, was it PSI? I couldn't remember the name of it. The Shenandoah was like, it was, oh, I think Shenandoah was like, that was like the first song on that album, on the album, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, PSI, I actually had to go buy the physical and I never listened to it. Uh, so that's it. Met the world first. Good for them. Good for them. No soldier news. I know. But hey, we got to wrap this up. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Chat, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a wild week. It was a wild week, man. Fucking Twitch, the ninja, breastfeeding, pretentious ass developers. There's so much, there's so much happening this week. And y'all, y'all stuck through it. Stuck through it with me. I, pre I appreciate that. I can't really get my arm around there. So, yeah, Ninja is breastfeeding by spitting vodka into his cat's mouth before throwing it. Yes, that is absolutely what's happening. Thank you for joining me on the news. Again, my name is Mike B. I'll see you guys later.